Hurricane Ike evacuees can't return home. Rescue crews navigated debris strewn streets Sunday to reach people still stuck in some of the thousands and thousands of homes flooded by Hurricane Ike. Authorities imposed a curfew in Houston and have warned it could take weeks and weeks if not months before the nation's fourth largest city is fully back up and running. No matter what anybody says, this was a very big hurricane. At least 500 to 600 miles wide. Authorities hope to spare thousands of Texans, 140,000 by some estimates, who ignored orders to flee ahead of the storm from another night amid the destruction. At least eight deaths so far have been blamed on the storm, and authorities are worried the toll could rise. They saw the hurricane coming. They saw what it did to Haiti and Cuba, and they just sat there. In Houston, a week-long curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. was imposed because most of the city was still without power. Highways darkened street lights, and deep pools of water made it difficult just to drive through the city. In the interest of safety, we're asking people to not be out in the streets and their vehicles are on foot. In Hackberry, Louisiana, about 15 miles from the coast, workers were trying to move a large, a large shrimp boat out of the highway with a bulldozer. But the team had to stop because of strong currents in the floodwaters and extreme difficulty in seeing the roadway. You can't see even the sides of the road, and if you left the road, you'd just be swept away. residents of the small community of Seabrook, Texas, near the Johnson Space Center, were met by a roadblock as they tried to return home, and police officers were turning them away. It's going to be quite a while, one officer said. Just listen to the news. Seabrook is a disaster area. No sewers, no infrastructure no electricity. It really isn't very safe. Of course, it's making the residents pretty upset. But there's an order signed by the mayor. We can't let anybody in, and it's going to be a while. Some of these little cities or towns, they are destroyed in all practical respects or aspects. Eight deaths so far were blamed on the storm. Five in Texas, two in Louisiana, and one in Arkansas. Authorities said Sunday three people were found in Galveston, including one person found in a submerged vehicle near the airport. Another person died in Arkansas when a tree fell on his mobile home. Texas governor, Texas governor's office said at least 940 people had been saved by nightfall Saturday, but, but that thousands and thousands more had made distress calls the night before. Another 600 were rescued from flooding in Louisiana. Yes, even in Louisiana there was flooding. In Orange, Texas, the mayor estimated about a third of the city of 19,000 people was flooded, anywhere from six inches of water to six feet. These people got out 
with the wet shirts on their back. And we don't know exactly how long it will take to pump water out of the city. It's going to take a while. Yes, no matter what anybody says, there was major damage. This was a very, very big hurricane. Hurricane Ike was the first major storm to directly hit a major U.S. metro area since Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans in 2005. And Hurricane Ike is still causing problems. Although it weakened to a tropical depression early Sunday morning, it was still packing winds up to 30 miles per hour or 35 miles per hour as it dumped rain over Arkansas and was headed north. Tornado warning sirens also sounded in parts of Arkansas and the storm downed more trees and knocked out power to thousands and thousands more there. More than three million were without power in Texas at the height of the storm and it could be weeks, it could be weeks if not months before it is fully restored. Those who did leave were glad they heeded orders, despite the inconvenience. Why did they stay? They saw the hurricane coming, and they just sat there. Many didn't even try to leave. What were they thinking? They couldn't see it coming? Hurricane Ike's deadly surge has kept thousands of evacuees holed up in some cramped quarters, shelters, RVs, even a giant warehouse, as they face the prospect of trying to return to flood-ravaged neighborhoods left dark without electricity and no running water. Others stayed in motels in the hopes that they had enough money to stay until it was safe to return, that is, on condition, F they have any homes to return to. More than 1.2 million people fled the Texas coast as Hurricane Ike approached. But officials estimate as many as, again, 140,000 just simply stayed there. Didn't even try to leave. They sat there. Rescue crews went neighborhood to neighborhood throughout the night to try and save those who stayed from having to spend another night amid flattened homes. Just mounds and mounds of debris and downed or snapped in two power lines. In San Antonio, approximately 140 miles inland, shelters held at least 5,000 evacuees. More than 4,000 people rode out the storm in tents, RVs, and campers, according to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. In Tyler, about 200 miles inland, 3,400 evacuees took temporary refuge, and it became clear that some shelters wouldn't suffice for the long term. A city spokeswoman said officials were trying to figure out what to do with at least 1,600 people huddled inside what once served as a Walmart warehouse. They don't know what to do with all the evacuees. And, like I said, many places along the Texas coastline, they're, they're badly damaged. Thousands and thousands of houses have been destroyed. It takes a long time to rebuild all this stuff. Infrastructure has to be put back in place. Well, first, electricity restored, and that is going to take a while. Anyway, once again, Hurricane Ike was a warning. And on top of that, it was more than a warning to the people of America, this country. And these are more signs of the end times, transition days. And there are many, many signs just watch the news. Yes, many signs.